Are we ready to receive the word of God? Okay. Let's welcome our mommy as she comes forward. Let's just take that song one more time, just for about a minute. Yes, thank you. January and the month of February. Thank you. Today is the first of March. We give you praise. Lord, we just exalt your name. As we go into this time of the word, Father, I hide myself behind you. Take the stage, Lord, in everyone's life and in this world and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's turn our hands together to the King of Kings. Thank you, choir. You look so beautiful. I wonder why you haven't been wearing this outfit, eh? All that black, black, black you're always wearing for us. Please make sure you wear this at least once a month going forward. You just look awesome. It's not only black, black, black. Ah, the Lord will help you. God, let's jam our hands together for them. Don't they look lovely? They look, when I saw them, I'm coming in one by one. I was like, ah, ah, so where has this one been? And they be wearing black, black, black all the time. The Lord will help us. God bless you. May please be seated. Before we go into the word, Brother James, please go ahead. Before we go into the word, there's a video. That I the planet Amber Light is it. on. The eyes of the whole world are attentive to what is happening in China. Authorities and the world's populations are apprehensive about a new outbreak, the coronavirus. Very little is known about it, but it is enough for the world to be alert. A whole city with more than 11 million people has been completely isolated, and 46 million are in quarantine. The images are worrying. People are desperate to be attended to in the hospitals. The corridors are full. The government is running against the clock to build a hospital with 1,000 beds in six days to assist the victims of the coronavirus. This nurse accuses the country of hiding the real number of infections. And according to her, it is more than 90,000 people. Impressive footage from China's social media, which has gone viral, shows people passing out on the streets. This problem is already spread across the Asian continent, and many countries are confirming their first cases. At the beginning of 2020, the Apocalypse Watch, which was created by a group of scientists, was ahead of this, and indicates 100 seconds to the end of the Earth. The predominant factors are the risk of a war, environment, and climate changes. All that is happening is nothing more than signs revealed by the Lord Jesus 2,000 years ago. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines, and pestilences. All these are the beginning of sorrows. It is not known how all this will end, but one thing is certain, the end is close. And the question is, are you investing in your eternal salvation? Where will your soul go? Don't ignore the signs. The king is coming back. Praise the Lord. 
I'm not going to preach. I'm going to preach, but not yet. The Lord said I should show this, this video, and I should give a call. Can I have all heads bow, please? He said I should give this call. And this call is not necessary for those who are born again. You, I mean, who are not born again. There's nobody here who is new. You are here, you are born again. But if Jesus comes, you are not sure that you make it. Please run to the front. It's not time to be shy. We've seen that the coronavirus is real. And it's not only that. There's so much that is happening. You are here. Doesn't matter if you're a worker, minister, member. Please run forward. It is real. If Jesus comes and you are not sure, we end this service and the, and, and the alarm goes off and Jesus comes and you are not certain as a worker, as a minister, as a member, please run forward. This is what the Lord has said I should do. He said before you preach at each service you must do this just run forward this morning it is not a time to be shy you are not sure you are not sure you are not sure there are people that it doesn't matter if everyone is here in front this is urgent you are not sure please just run forward the sign the king is coming the king is coming I still sense there's one person sitting down. There's one person sitting down. You need to be in front. I don't know who it is. Just run. The Holy Spirit is saying you need to be here. You are not certain that if Jesus walks in now, you will make it. We can see the signs. The coronavirus is just one. There are many others. Australia burning. Wars in Iraq, in Iran. And please, those who are in front, just cry out to the Lord. Have mercy on me and forgive me. Have mercy on me and forgive me. You know, whatever it is, Lord, just go ahead and pray before I pray for you. He's not condemning you, but he's giving us a chance. It's a day of grace, please. Let's just cry out to the Lord. For all of us in front, let's just go on our knees and say, Father, have mercy on me. Just cry out to him, have mercy on me, and pray again. Lord Jesus, I just pray again. Come, I'm going to, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. But first pray, have mercy on me. If you are still sitting down and you need to be in front, please run forward. Please run forward. It's not time to be ashamed. It's because he loves us in the rose of Sharon. And he said, definitely, I must pray, I must pray this. I'll lead you in this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Lord, I acknowledge my sin before you. Because of my sin, I may not make it. Therefore, I plead the blood of Jesus. Please forgive me. Please cleanse me in the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my life afresh and be my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Where my name has been taken off, please rewrite it, Lord, and help me. Help me. Are you praying? Help me to stand, to walk the straight and narrow. Help me to walk the straight and narrow. Lord, on that last day, I will not be found wanting. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Lord, that on that fi final day, when the, when the trumpet goes, I will make it. I will make it. I will make it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord, I thank you for every child of yours who is here, every son, every daughter who has acknowledged they are not certain. Lord, thank you for the love that you have for us. Father, Lord, I thank you because every one of my brethren, including myself, we will not miss it on the final day. Father, for these ones who have come forward, they are special to you, they are precious to you. Father, the grace to stand and to walk on the, on the straight and the narrow, give to them. Father, Lord, when there are temptations, there are diverse things that make people trip and fall, Lord, the grace to stand with you, give to each one. And the confidence, Lord, that they are your children, give to them. On the last day, Father, we will not miss it. Every one of us will make it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. God bless you. You may please go back to your seats. God bless you. God bless you. This morning, the Lord has given us a word, and I have, yes. He's given us a word. It is, it is about to rain. It is about to rain. It is about to rain. Joel 2, 23 to 24. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he, has, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain, in the first month. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. Rose of Sharon, it is about to rain. Say to somebody, it is about to rain. Yesterday, I got a text from a sister. I won't tell you. In her, she'll tell you her own testimony. I'm not telling you her name. But the Lord gave me, I, I, when I got that text, I was so happy. There's something she'd been trusting God for for years. But she has continued faithfully to serve God. She's one of those who is here. When some of us, when we go through challenges, 
what happens? Sometimes we disappear from church. But somehow she has just stayed consistently. Yesterday she sent me a text. I finally God has answered her. And her testimony starts. You know, I was, I was so excited. I was so happy. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this to encourage some of us here that are waiting for one thing or the other. And it seems to tarry. Jesus is in this house. He's in this house. The fact that your testimony is delayed does not mean that he hasn't heard you. Does not mean he hasn't answered. It just means that there is a time. And that set date, as we said, was it last week or the week before? That challenge you are going through has an expiry date. And it will not go beyond it. On the set day, he's a God who tests our faith. Like he did for that sister. But now she's rejoicing. So be glad then, you children of Rose of Sharon, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully. He has given us the former rain, has he not? Each month we have testimonies here. And he will cause the rain to come upon you, Rose of Sharon, both the former rain and the latter rain. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. So what happens when it doesn't rain, the ground is dry? You bear with me. I have, I have a short time, so I'm going to move very fast. Just move with me, please. When it doesn't rain, the ground is, the ground is dry. And if that situation is prolonged, it usually leads to drought and famine, as was experienced in Israel, if you remember. Israel went into a situation of drought and famine, and they, were, they didn't have rain for three years. But when the Lord sent rain, the famine ended. And the crops began to respond to the rain. And the barns became full. So let's look very quickly at a few points. What happens when it rains? What happens when it rains? Because he's saying it's about to rain. So what do you expect? I'm only, I only have five points here. If time permits, I'll get to the five. If time doesn't permit, I'll, go, I'll stop where I have to and we'll continue in second service. So what happens when it rains? The very first thing is provision. When the Lord causes rain to fall on us, there is a refreshing the thirsty land is revived and drought and famine are over. It is a blessing. I thought more than one person would say amen to that, Rose of Sharon. Please be alive this morning. Eh? Be alive. When you need to say amen, let's say amen. When we need to praise the Lord, let's praise him. Sister Musanda said something that's profound this earlier on when she was, you know, at, at the beginning. She was saying that, you know, you may still be waiting for your testimony. But the fact that you are now alive is enough reason to continue to praise him. That sister, I said, waited for years. There are times when she was heavy-hearted. There are times when she felt like not going to church. I know because I chat with her and I enc I've encouraged her over time. But she still came and the Lord helped her. Eventually, you will have your testimony in the name of Jesus. So, so what are we saying here? We're saying that when the Lord causes rain to fall on us, there is a refreshing, isn't there? When it's been hot and then suddenly it rains, the temperature drops, does it not? It gets cooler. You know, it's funny, South Africa has extreme weathers. When it's winter, it can be really cold. But when it's summer, sometimes it's 30 something degrees and we're doing like this. And right in the middle of summer, sometimes the rain falls and we, we're taking a sigh of relief because it's cool. And that is actually what happens when in the spirit realm there is rain. So whereas you, you may not have had enough or we may not have had enough because of famine, after the rain, increase comes. Increase is coming for somebody here in the name of Jesus. Famine ends for the one who was unable to meet his needs and pay his bills. When that famine ends, the Lord opens a door. It could be a door for a job. It could be that you've been trusting God for a job. And when that door opens, what happens? Famine ends, the rain has come down. Or it is maybe a business opportunity for some. The Lord would have me tell some here. It may not be a job he will open a door for you for. It may be a business opportunity that he may be laying. And the Lord says to tell somebody here, do not neglect small beginnings. He may say to you, start small. Start small. Remember the sister I told you about last week. Was it last week or the week before? In Botswana. She started small with her little kitchen. Until the Lord put her on the newspaper in Botswana. Somebody here, I don't know who it is. You are waiting on knocking on the doors for a job. But God is saying, I will give you a business opportunity. For some other person, it is a job. Each one needs to be sensitive to what God is saying. God will make a way for the one who is trusting God for finances. For some, you are trusting God for finances to go to school. When he makes a way for you, that rain has come. He, what does he do? He brings us out of that narrow place to a broad place. When you are in a place where you don't have money, it means that 
your money finishes before the end of the month. Or it means that the month starts and there's even nothing inside your pocket. But the Lord is saying that the rain is coming for somebody here in the name of Jesus. The rain is coming for some. Can I have more than one person say amen to that? Psalm 18 verse 19 says, He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. In a, and what does that mean? It means the dry, it means that you were in a narrow place financially, a narrow place. Emotionally also, it could be a narrow place. But financially is the one that is key when we talk about narrow places. You know if you're in a narrow place, you can't move around. For example, if you don't have much money, maybe all you can get is share a room with someone, a very tiny room. Somebody was sharing with me about a room they got, that the room they, she was describing, so tiny, you know, you can hardly move around. But when God brings increase to that person, they're able to then get maybe a studio a studio, whatever it is. But you know what? Do not neglect, do not despise small beginnings. If God has started you with somewhere that's very small, thank God for that very small in the first place. There's some of us here, when God does something for us, all we can say is, ah, is this all God can do? Or when is God going to do the other? But for somebody here, the Lord is saying, thank me, my daughter, thank me, thank me, thank me, my daughter. In the place of thanksgiving, things will happen. His word tells us in Psalm 67, let the people praise you, oh God. Let the people praise you, then the earth will yield her increase. For somebody here, all that God is waiting for is for you to begin to be thankful to him before he brings that breakthrough. So Psalm 18 verse 19 says, he's brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Make sure that the Lord delights in you, Rose of Sharon. He will bring you out of that narrow place in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 35 verse 1 says, The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. When, in, when, when the rain falls, even the barren places become fruitful. The barren places, only Pastor Gloria is saying amen. Are there no barren places in some of our lives? For some here, you are trusting God for a child. You are trusting God for whatever else it is. The barren places will become fruitful when the rain comes. The second point is that stagnancy ends. When it rains, God puts an end to stagnancy because the one who has been stagnant has been on the same spot for many years. When the rain comes for a certain individual, that person will be promoted. And you know, promotion for bro brother A is different from promotion from sister B. Promotion for one person, maybe you were working, your business only took you in South Africa, then God begins to take you across borders. That is promotion for one person. For another person that's employed, promotion means may mean that you are, your, your portfolio is made bigger or you are actually moved to the next level. For promotion for another person, it could be you're a single person and you get married. That's a measure of promotion. I don't know what it means for you, but the Lord is saying this morning, when the rain comes, for some people, stagnancy will come to an end. Deuteronomy 167, this is what happened to the children of Israel. If you recall, they were at the Mount Horem for 40 years. We don't need to go into that story, but we know the story of what happened there. Because they had complained and murmured and grumbled instead of being thankful to God. When they hit challenges, when they didn't have water, they grumbled. When they didn't have food, they grumbled. When they hit problems, they grumbled. And God got one day, God got tired. And he said, enough is enough. This grumbling congregation, they are going to stay in this place. And for 40 years, he said, they will stay there until that generation died out. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. We will not be a grumbling church. I want us to understand that challenges, they must happen. They are part of life. Challenges will happen. Tests will happen. Trials will happen. In addition to that, Father and the Lord has said to us, we will face battles this year. But guess what? We have the victory. We have the victory. And so this is what God was saying. At a point when all those who had complained had died out, Deuteronomy 1, 6 to 7, he said, when we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites, to so all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, the coastal plains. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to the great river, great Euphrates River. The Canaanite land was the one where, as God described it, a land with milk and honey. So the children of Israel, for 40 years, they were circled, going around. Um, some, it's in, in some versions, it's Mount Sinai. In some versions, it's Horeb. 40 years they were going around. Have you waited for your promise for 40 years? They were at the edge for 40 years. 
because of mumbling and grumbling. There is a place, Rose of Sharon, that mumbling and grumbling puts us into. And there is a place that thanksgiving puts us into. The place that mumbling and grumbling puts us into is a place where we are just not going round and round and we are not moving. But the place where thanksgiving puts us into is a place where God moves us out. I thought somebody is going to begin to give God praise this morning, to give God praise, to thank him. Because thanksgiving is one of the ways that you and I can move God's hand. Stagnancy will come to an end when the rain comes. The third point is that some of the singles will meet their partners when the rain begins to fall. Singles, there's the opportunity to meet your partners when the rain begins to fall. For the single who has been lonely, when the rain begins to fall, God sets them in families. Psalm 66, Psalm 68 verse 6 says, God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. But he makes the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. Rose of Sharon Complaining and grumbling can put us in a dry place. But we will not complain and grumble in the name of Jesus. We will thank God. Even while we are waiting for that testimony, we will thank God. Because if we look behind, we can see where he's brought us from. There is none of us here today that has not moved from point A to point B. Yes, I may want to get there, and I'm still here. But he has moved me from there. So let us, let, let, and as I speak to you, I'm speaking to myself. Let's cultivate a habit of thanksgiving. A habit of thanksgiving. Not just thanking him when things happen. And not just thanking him because I'm anticipating something to happen. But let's thank him because the danger of that is if it doesn't happen when I'm expecting it to, then what happens? I will start to mumble and grumble. Let's cultivate the habit of thanking him no matter what. And then he says, oh, let the people praise you. Let the people praise you. The earth will yield its increase. So the single will meet their partners. Yes, the single will meet their partners. They will meet their partners. The fourth point, very quickly, is the overflow. When the rain falls, there is increase. And the sound of rejoicing and making merry. There is a lifting up. Jeremiah 13, 19 to 20. I thought more people would say amen to that rest of Sharon. Jeremiah 13, 19 to 20. Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. Rose of Sharon, out of the rose of Sharon, out of your lives, out of your families, shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those that make merry. I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. Rose of Sharon, you shall not be small in the name of Jesus. Their children shall also be as before and their congregation shall be established before for me and I will punish all those who oppress them. Isn't this an awesome God? I'm going to take that again and I just challenge us to just decree amen as we go on because amen means so be it. You are agreeing with God. Then out of the rose of Sharon shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Their children shall also be as before, and their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all those who oppress the rose of Sharon. Our Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Because when the rain comes, change comes. It brings a sound of rejoicing. It brings a sound of testimonies. And wonderfully, the Lord punishes those that oppress us. He's a faithful God. And the fifth and final point is a new anointing. Ah, remember that scripture. I want to take us back to that scripture because it talked about a new oil. Uh, verse 24 of, of Joel 2.23. It says, The threshing floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. What is that wine and oil? Oh, it's awesome. A new wine. A new wine. Talks to a new anointing. A new anointing. When the rain falls, there's a new wine signifying a new anointing. A new anointing from the altar of God in the rose of Sharon. I thought more people would say amen to that. A new anointing bring, bringing revival in the hearts, hearts of men and women. Ah, uh, look at your amen, it's gold. A new anointing bringing revival in the hearts of you and me. <laughs> Oh, a new anointing bringing change in the lives of the members of the Rose of Sharon. A new anointing to succeed in our business. A new anointing to succeed in our workplace. A new anointing 
on all fronts. Ezekiel 47 verse 12 says, along the bank of the river, on this side and that. Why is it a river? The rain is falling in that place. We'll grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither. Rose of Sharon, your leaves will not wither. And their fruit will not fail. Rose of Sharon, your fruit will not fail. When fruit is expected from you, it will be found in you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rose of Sharon, you will bear fruit every month. Because their water flows from the sanctuary. You know what is that sanctuary? The sanctuary is the presence of God. You come here on the Sundays, you receive the water, represents the word, it represents life, it represents a freshness. You come every morning, each one of us come, and we receive a word from God's presence. We receive a new life, grace to get through the day. The word of God that goes forth and breaks gates of brass. The word of God that cuts us under bars of iron. We receive that in our lives. And it goes on to say their fruit will be their food. And their leaves for medicine. Rose of Sharon, that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Yes, let's thank God this morning. Let's thank him because the rain is coming. Let's go ahead and thank him. Father, we thank you because the rain is coming. The rain is coming. Thank you. Let's just stand up and thank him because the rain is coming. The rain is coming. Father, we thank you. Brother James, please get ready with the second one. Father, we thank you. We give praise to you as a church this morning for the rain that is coming upon the rose of Sharon and the sign you have given us of the sister who already could share about her, about the rain that has started upon her life. Thank you because the rain is coming. Father Lord, we will be partakers of that rain. Father, we will not be, Father Lord, we will not be like Egypt where the rain, the rain poured in Egypt, in, in Goshen and it didn't in Egypt. Father, we will experience the rain. Oh, Lord, we will experience the rain in the rose of Sharon. We will testify the sound of rejoicing and thanksgiving. It will not cease in our lives. We give you praise, Father. We give you glory, Lord. You are the almighty God, the everlasting Father. The only Sheyan. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and praise him. The Arugua Ojo, the Asoromata say, the God who opens a door and no man can shut it. The Ayam that I am. The God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. Father, we thank you because of the rain that's coming. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. God bless you. May please be seated, Brother James. Thank you. There's a second video to watch. Today is a special day. Hallelujah. I bring God bless that person. In the ah, give us volume more. Jesus, and I want to announce to you that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All your prayers during this period of fasting will be answered by fire. I've cried to the Almighty God for you, and I know He has heard my cry, that all you desire from Him that will make your joyful, He will make available to you. It's going to be well with you, and this will mark a brand new beginning for you in every facet of your life. I want to assure you in the name that's above every other name that your testimonies will be great and there will be many. And I want to assure you that the God you serve will take you higher day by day as he moves you from glory to glory. I encourage you that you too will now go ahead and begin to serve him like never before, winning souls, planting churches, working for him in every way possible. And by the way, I want to assure you that there's no virus that is going to come near you at all. Because it is written that uh, they that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I believe that this is a time for God to show you clearly that there's a difference between those who serve Him wholeheartedly and those who do not. It shall be well with you. You will enjoy peace. You will have good health. The great promoter will promote you. And each time I hear concerning you, it will be good news. God bless you and congratulations once again. And I pray that you'll be sending your testimonies to me very soon. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father Lord, we thank you for the love you have for us. We thank you. Oh, you are a merciful God. You are a faithful God. Lord, we thank you for the rain. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for the grace you gave to us this past 50 days. We thank you, Lord, for the reassurance, Lord, that though we fight many battles, the testimonies will be ours. You are fighting those battles for us. Jehovah, we thank you for reminding us, Lord, just reminding us that we need to make sure that we are ready for you. 
Father, I just decree concerning the rose of Sharon, none of us will miss it. Amen. Oh, Father, none of us will miss it. Amen. On the final day, we shall not be found wanting. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Let's jam our hands to the King of Kings. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies of